Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Stacey Montgomery, the Capital Programs Administrator at the Maryland Historical Trust, and I'm here with my colleague, Taylor Means, of the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture. Today, you're attending the AAHPP Grant Program General Overview webinar. You can find a PDF of this slide deck on our website that you can download and click all of the links. A recording of this webinar is available on the Maryland Historical Trust YouTube channel for future reference. Thank you for joining us for the general overview webinar for our next grant round. Today, we'll be going over eligibility of applicants, properties and project types, competitive, competitiveness of your application, how to get started on your application, how to best describe your project, and what is needed, needed for filling out your budget spreadsheet, the internal grant administration of, side of things once you have submitted your application, and then the criteria used to evaluate and select the awarded grants. First, for some program background. This grant is administered, administered as a collaboration between the Maryland Historical Trust and the Maryland Commission on African American History and Culture. This grant program funds capital construction related projects for properties that contribute to Maryland's African American history and heritage. It is a very competitive grant due to the allocation of $5 million a year. To give you an idea of how competitive it is, in the last round, we had over $20 million in requested funds. For some pro program background, the maximum grant amount available is $250,000 and a suggested minimum grant amount is $10,000. We can accept smaller amounts in some cases. Don't be afraid to ask for the full $250,000 if that is what your project needs to be completed. Always ask for a little more than you think you need as it will likely get used or it can be returned as unused funds. Asking for the maximum or minimum grant amount does not make your application more or less competitive. The application will be live on our program website starting the morning of Monday, April 1st. You can access this through the My Grant Account portal on our website. The application is due by 11.59 p.m. on Monday, July 1st of 2024. Please your, submit your application as early as possible in case you encounter any issues so we can assist you in resolving them before the application deadline. MHT staff are not in the office or checking emails the night the application is due. So if there are technical issues at midnight prohibiting you from applying, please email us explaining the issues so we can help try to try, help to try to fix it after the deadline. If we notice issues with your application during our threshold review, we'll reach out to you at that time. Now my colleague Taylor Means will talk about eligibility. So if you are considering applying to the grant program, the first step is to determine if you as an applicant, your property and your project are eligible. It is important to note that the goal of the grant is to fund capital-related expenditures only. Project work is expected to last 15 years. We cannot fund work that has already started, so any work already underway is not eligible for grant funding. However, other work can be happening on your site while the grant property is uh, the grant project is underway. All projects must meet the Secretary of Interior standards. Pretty much anyone is eligible, eligible to apply. This includes nonprofit organizations, local governments, business entities, private individuals, and state and federal agencies. If you are a past applicant or past or current, current awardee, there are no restrictions on reapplying every year. Even though anyone can apply, there are restrictions on some types of applicants, which I will get into next. Nonprofit organizations and businesses must be registered with SDAT and in good standing with the state in order to be eligible. Check the website for your organization or business if you intend to apply. There is time between now and July 1st to get in good standing with SDAT if you are not already. As a reminder, the links from this presentation are found in the grant guidelines and webinar slides on the program website. There are a wide variety of property types that could be eligible for the grants, including houses, mills, churches, ships, general stores, barns, schools, lighthouses, and archaeological sites. Applications from diverse property types and histories are encouraged. Your property does not have to be historic or have any specific historic designation. However, it should have a strong connection to African-American heritage and history in Maryland. 
A part of meeting the property eligibility requirement of the program, MHT must have consent from the property owner to do the project and the willingness to convey an easement. Not every property will have to convey an easement, but every applicant must submit a signed letter. A property owner consent letter template is available on the program website to download. It must be signed by the property owner and submitted with the application. <clears throat> Without this letter, your application will not be considered. Even if the applicant is the owner and even if your property already has an easement with MHT, you must submit this letter. Please note that MHT will use the property listing in the Maryland State Department of Assessments and Taxation, SDAT, to confirm the name of the property owner. MHT will then compare this information with what is provided in the letter of the property owner consent. If MHT cannot find your property on the SDAT website or the information does not match what you have provided, your application may not be considered for funding. So please check to ensure there are no issues. Now, Stacy will talk more specifically about eligible activities. Thank you. There are four broad categories of eligible activities, acquisition, restoration or rehabilitation, new construction, and pre-development. All activities are construction related and should preserve the historic features and materials of a property if present. Acquisition first. For acquisition, um, the property must, the acquisition of the property must directly contribute to its preservation and protect the property. Think about why your organization acquiring the property will help preserve it. If you're applying for an acquisition grant, please know that this is a complex type of grant to be awarded. Timing and finances must align perfectly, which is very difficult to do when it comes to real estate timelines and the grant administration timeline. Acquisition grants uh, applications can also request funds for restoration and rehabilitation projects alongside the acquisition. Please reach out to us to discuss your acquisition application before applying. Restoration or rehabilitation. This is the most common activity for the grant. Restoration or rehabilitation work should emphasize the protection of the property and repair of important historic or original features and materials if the site is historic. Please don't think that your project needs to be flashy or fancy to be competitive. We fund the rehabilitation of historic siding such as wood, masonry work such as repointing or foundation repairs, roof repairs or replacement, structural work, and carpentry work, work such as wood flooring, windows, and doors. Work items such as accessibility upgrades, mechanical and electrical repairs, lighting, drainage or site work, plumbing, and bathroom and kitchen upgrades are also eligible under this grant. New construction is also eligible under this grant program. Whether you're looking to construct a brand new building or put an addition on an existing structure, the grant can fund these types of projects. Even if your site just needs a small outbuilding like a restroom or a pavilion, these projects are eligible for the grant. The last type of uh, application is for pre-development. Eligible pre-development work must be necessary for construction to take place and will inform a construction project. Eligible pre-development activities include construction documents, archaeological surveys, historic structures reports, conditions assessments, structural engineering reports, architectural services, cemetery conservation plans, and more. Historical research, preservation plans, feasibility studies, and master plans are not eligible pre-development activities. In some cases, pre-development only grants are awarded, but to be a competitive application, pre-development activities would not be the only part of the application. It will be part of a larger construction project that will use the pre-development documents to inform and complete a construction project. When deciding on your grant project, keep in mind the urgency or need of the work. How will it help the public access or experience your site? The project should be a discrete phase of work. If you're unsure that your grant project is eligible or competitive, please get in touch with us. The Secretary of the Interior Standards. <clears throat> As previously mentioned, all work to historic sites must meet the Secretary of the Interior Standards. So what are the Secretary of the Interior Standards? If you're not familiar with them, they're a set of guidelines for work on historic properties created by the National Park Service that, as a state agency, we are obligated to follow. Simply put, your project must protect and retain historic features and materials. You can see from the photo on the left, the interior of this lodge was deteriorated, but that doesn't mean that the interior should just be gutted and replaced with new non-historic materials, or that the stage there should be removed altogether. Instead, by following the standards to repair in kind where possible and replace the rest with appropriate materials, 
the setting and character of this site is retained. If you have questions about the Secretary of the Interior Standards, please reach out to us for, with those questions. Ineligible costs. In discussing eligible costs, we should also mention that there are some ineligible costs. There's a list of ineligible ex uh, expenditures for the grant funds on this slide. This includes legal fees, insurance, staff salaries, maintenance, exhibits, landscaping, and work that is not bid per program policy. A more complete list of eligible and ineligible costs can be found in our grant guidelines, which can be accessed on our website. If you're applying for a grant for a religious property, there are some restrictions to be aware of. Buildings used for religious purposes are primarily funded for exterior or structural work. This is because interior spaces used for religious purposes are ineligible for funding from the state. Work on features with religious imagery, such as stained glass windows, are not eligible for funding. Please get in touch with us to discuss your religious site if you have any questions. If you are interested on our YouTube channel, we have a recorded webinar that covers religious sites in more detail. Our program webpage has a direct link to our YouTube channel. Cemeteries are also eligible for this grant program. Examples of cemetery projects include the repair and resetting of markers, the identification of burials through ground penetrating radar or other survey methods, a cemetery conservation plan, and the repair or installation of paths, walls, fences, and parking areas. Now Taylor will talk more specifically about how to get started on your application. Thank you. So as Stacy mentioned, I'm going to talk to you more about how to get started on your application and specific application questions. So first, first question, where to begin? Look over the sample application and grant guidelines on the website sooner than later and identify items that will take time to put together, such as the letter of property owner consent, requesting letters of support, and creating your budget and getting estimates. You can use letters of support from other grant programs or from last year's round if you are looking for funding for the same scope of work as outlined in the letters. Your letters must be signed or they will not be acknowledged. It may help to be aware of other state and local regulations, regulations such as the permitting process or if your project would need to go in front of a historic preservation or planning commission. We do not evaluate or check on these things, but you will want to investigate these items before getting started and see what other requirements you may have to follow and how it may impact your project timeline. So when you develop your project, what type of project do you have in mind? Acquisition, rehab? Think about what will be the most competitive project for your site and reach out to us to discuss. If the project is going to cost more than a maximum grant amount allowed, which is $250,000, or take longer than two years to complete, think about breaking down the project into phases. What is the highest priority or most urgent work to focus on? Please do not ask us for floor repairs if the roof is leaking and needs to be addressed first. We need to make sure to leave your property in a better state than when the project started. We also recommend reaching out to past grantees for suggestions for developing a strong application or for recommendations on who to approach for a good contractor estimate. If you are a church, talk to other churches about their hurdles for the permitting process or getting umbrella letters or other issues. Know what expertise the project requires and assemble a strong project team. In the application, provide at least 10 photos of your property and project areas. This includes providing photo captions or brief descriptions. Please add photos to a Word document and upload that. There isn't space to upload individual photos in the application itself. Be sure to provide photos that show the work described in the construction project description section. The photos submitted should show the project areas and how urgent the work is. Include an overall image of the project property that provides the grant reviewer with context along with close-up photos of the site's deteriorated features, which should clearly show the urgency of the project. Photos of your property may be used for promotional material and announcing awards, so make sure they are clear and impactful. For your construction project description, this is one of the heavily weighted sections of the application. You will be asked in the application to describe your project. Be clear and concise about what the project entails and what you're asking the grant to fund. Think about these tips and questions when doing so. Is the work eligible in preserving a historic feature? 
Is this a discrete phase of work? Is the work getting a project started or the final phase of a larger construction project? Is the description clear enough for grant reviewers to understand? Make sure all the work described in the section matches the line items in your budget spreadsheet. So a sample um, spreadsheet is here. You can't create a budget without knowing your project scope of work. In the construction project description section, you will talk about your entire construction project, even work that the grant is not funding. The work you're requesting grant funds for should be listed under the grant project scope of, your, of work question. This should match the line items in your budget spreadsheet. You can see an example of a construction project description and grant project scope of work on the screen here. So to develop your budget, we recommend getting one or more estimates for the grant scope of work. One estimate is sufficient for the application and they are typically free. From there, you will be able to identify project priorities and if other funding resources are needed to complete the project. Decide if your organization can manage the project or if a project manager is needed to help successfully execute the project. In your budget, you will want to include a line item for this project manager. This can be an estimate received from an architect or general contractor. It's important to note that no match is required for this grant. If you're receiving other funds for the project, please identify their sources and amount. Whether you have done your own fundraising, are working on a bond bill, or if you have applied for or received other grant funds, please include these in your application so the committee can see the level of funding your project has and make note of other state funding sources in case they may impact how you use this grant fund. So here is an image of the budget spreadsheet you'll fill out for your project. Please be aware that there is also another tab located at the bottom of the spreadsheet where you can find the sample budget. Please upload your project budget spreadsheet to the application as an Excel file, not as a PDF or other file format. Additionally, do not include the sample budget and instructions page in your application, only your project budget. As you can see on the screen, there are six columns in the budget spreadsheet. The first is the item number. You can add as many items as your project includes. The second column includes each work item you want to fund. Then the green column is where you will list the funds you are requesting from this grant, which is again up to $250,000. In the next blue column, you can list other state funds like bond bills and MHAA grants, what and what they will cover. Lastly, in the other projects funds, other projects funds column, you can list funds from non-state sources like fundraising or income. Use the last column to total each line item. Projects that will be ready to start after awarded are preferred and would make your application more competitive. When putting together your project schedule, consider these questions and refer to the grant guidelines for more information. Is the project phase? What is your own schedule? Do you need to plan around a festival or other project? Are you a museum or event space that can't afford to close during a certain time of year? Consider time for permits, designs if needed, MHC improvements and procurements. These all take time, so consider them in your project schedule. And please know your project won't start right away. However, we do anticipate that most projects are completed within a two year period. Another heavily weighted section of the application is the urgency of the project. Is your site threatened by development or demolition? Is there a major roof leak or crack in the foundation? Has a significant property finally come up for sale? Why should your project be prioritized for funding this year? Significance is another heavily weighted section of the application, um, where, which is asking for the historical and cultural significance of your property or site. Provide a brief yet compelling narrative about how your site conveys the African-American experience in Maryland. Assume grant reviewers are not familiar with your site and paint them a picture. It is not necessary to upload your site's MIHP or National Register nomination forms since they are already available to staff. You know your site, so tell us historical and cultural information beyond what is provided in these documents. The meaning of a place to its community can change over time. Explain what the property means to the community today and how the stewardship of this site is integral to your organization's mission. 
How does your site or organization provide a public benefit or educational experience that enhances the knowledge of African American history and culture in Maryland? So throughout the presentation so far, we have been mentioning what could make your application more competitive. There is a difference in being eligible for the grant program and having a competitive application. All applications that are considered by the review committee meet the basic eligibility requirements of the program. What sets your application apart from others is what can make it more competitive. Excelling in the most heavily weighted sections of the application, which are the public benefits, significance, and project description, will help make your application more competitive. Now, Stacy will talk about the grant administ administration aspect. Thank you. In this section, we'll discuss the grant administration schedule, grant paperwork, and conveying an easement. The application is available on our website starting April 1st and is due at 11.59 p.m. on July 1st, 2024. By late December of 2024, we anticipate announcing grant awards. Since we are working with a two-year timeline, the anticipated, anticipated grant round grant project completion date it's, is December of 2026. For those projects that are required to convey an easement, it takes time to complete grant paperwork and convey an easement, so work will not start right away. Funds are also not dispersed until the easement has been conveyed. So let's talk about easements. Some properties may be required to convey a preservation easement to MHT if a grant award is accepted. If your property already has an easement, that easement may be modified if award, an award is accepted. Only historic properties might be considered for easements. What is an easement? A preservation easement is a legal contract between MHT and the property owner. The easement is recorded in the local land records and stays with the property for a set amount of time. The easement helps protect buildings, structures, and associated archaeological resources on the property. It requires MHT approval of work on your property before it begins. The easement boundary is determined by MHT staff, by MHT easement staff. What's the owner's responsibilities? The owner must notify MHT of any proposed changes to the property within the easement boundaries for approval before work is undertaken. The owner must maintain the property in good condition. Insurance may be required to convey an easement, but this cost is not to be covered by these grant funds. For your grant application, include the property owner letter of consent to prove the property owner agrees to the project and to the conveyance of an easement to MHT. Since the easement must be conveyed before work begins or grant funds are dispersed, it may add to your timing. Legal fees related to drafting the easement are also not eligible for grant funds. There is a previously recorded webinar about easements that can be found on MHT's YouTube channel, and there are webinar slides on our website. You can also find the MHT easement program web link and email address on this slide. So what else should you know about um, this grant program. If you're awarded a grant, all work must be approved by MHT before construction starts. Grant funds can only pay for contractors hired through a competitive com procurement process approved by MHT, and MHT can only pay the grantee directly, who will then be responsible for paying individual contractors. So now let's wrap up by talking about the selection process and the grant selection criteria. Multiple selection criteria will be used to rank your application. There is more information in the grant guidelines about how the criteria is considered for each section of the application. Again, the most heavily weighted sections are significance, public benefit, and project description. For the grant selection process, after the deadline of July 1st, staff review all the applications and confirm program eligibility. The grant review committee then ranks and reviews the applications. The MHT board and secretary of planning review recommendations by the grant review committee and the secretary makes the final approval and award notifications are emailed in December. Here are a few tips for a successful application. Successful applications provide clear goals for the project and demonstrate how your organization's goals align with the goals of MCAAHC and MHT. Reviewers want to understand how your project or property will be sustained over time. Reviewers also appreciate understanding the level of community support your project has. 
So don't forget to ask for and submit letters of support from community leaders. Make sure that you are familiar with the grant guidelines so you don't miss any critical sections of the application. Finally, make sure that your application contains clear and concise responses to each question so it's easy for reviewers to understand all aspects of the project. Take time to review the sample application online and type your answers into a Word document before starting your application online. The system does have a time limit, so you will need to save your work. Here's our website where you can get basic program information, register for additional webinars and workshops, and access the application through the My Grant Account button. You can also reach the guidelines and resources page from here. Uh, visit the guidelines and resources page to download the documents you will need for the application, including the grant guidelines, budget spreadsheet, sample grant application, property owner letter of consent, the quick start guide, and the DNR form for projects that are on state owned, particularly the Department of Natural Resources properties. It's only needed for that. You can find links to webinars and slide decks from this and other related presentations. I know this is a lot of information, so thank you for sticking with us through this webinar. Here's our contact information so you can get in touch with us. Please reach out if you have any questions about this program or a potential application. Thank you and good luck.